Welcome to Parenting Your Sensitive Child. Parenting a highly sensitive child can feel overwhelming, and all the parenting books in the world can only get you so far if your head and your heart are out of alignment with your child's. I'm your host, Julia McGarry. Let's create a new parenting paradigm. Hey y'all, we're going to talk a little bit today about your reactions and when it makes sense for them to be a little bit big, okay? We spend a lot of time talking about how to tone our reactions down, how to respond instead of react, but sometimes in some situations, you have to react. It makes sense. So that's where we're going with this podcast. Before we really dig in, I want to take a minute to share with you, especially after last week's episode about reaching out to get help, I want to share with you that I've come to the decision to create tiered pricing for my coaching. So it's sort of like a sliding scale. It's several different tiers of cost, and I have criteria on my website for each one so you can self-identify which bracket you'd fit into so that coaching never feels too far out of reach for you, okay? This is a service that I want to be available to as many people as possible, and I just wanted to take an extra step beyond providing free content like on this podcast and on Instagram and my email list to make my coaching available to you even if you don't have a huge amount of disposable income and you've felt in the past like there was no point in reaching out because it was probably going to be too expensive okay so it's fully transparent all of the tiers all of the different prices for the tiers are listed on my website with the criteria for how you self-identify for those different tiers all right you can find it at partneredpath.com slash coaching, go check it out. If you've been thinking about doing this and you just haven't wanted to pull the trigger because you were worried about the price, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay? So today's episode is unscripted because we've had a wave of just like a horrible stomach bug hit our house. Um, I think we're in between waves right now, so I'm trying to put this together for you and make sure that it goes out before I get struck with it too. Fingers crossed I don't, but that's where we're at this week. Um, I wanted to share a little bit with you though about situations where having a big reaction to what your child is doing makes sense. I've been having some conversations with my clients recently about situations where they reacted bigger than they wanted to, but it was actually a situation where the child's safety was in play. This has happened to me, and it's a totally normal thing to have happen. So I want to just give you an example of what I'm talking about from my experience and share how you can repair with your child after something like this happens. So for me, the place that this has shown up the most is riding bikes with my kiddo. So we'll go on a family bike ride and we'll all be on our bicycles. And she's pretty good at riding her bike. But as she was, you know, getting better, she would often approach a busy street and look like she wasn't going to stop. Okay, maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, but there was a stop sign and she wasn't slowing down. And for me, that was super triggering because I knew it was a busy street and I was legitimately scared that she was going to ride on and get hit by a car. And at the same time, I'm on my bike. I can't reach over and physically stop her or grab her. The only tool I had at my disposal was my voice. So in those situations, I did end up elevating my voice and yelling at her to stop. Okay, I wasn't 
yelling at her that she'd done something wrong. I wasn't yelling at her as a punishment. It was like my fear-based reaction in a situation where fear is normal. (laughs) uh, My fear-based reaction to what she was doing and the results that I anticipated. And it was a it was a, a reaction. It was a very spontaneous, if you will, shout to get her attention. My child does not like to be yelled at. So you can imagine that in those situations, there were a lot of tears. There was a lot of, mom, you shouldn't have yelled at me. And to be fair, I do try not to yell at her. It is one of my goals not to yell as a parent. However, in this situation, and this is what I explained to her, I was like, you know, it looked like you were about to run your bike into traffic. It was really scary for me. I know you don't like to be yelled at. I'm sorry. I will try to do better controlling my reactions and trusting you to stop your bike in time. And I followed that with a very clear explanation of how far is too far when it comes to like going too too close to the street without stopping, right? I asked her, would it be helpful for you to know where I'm comfortable with seeing you stop? Like if you if you're not stopping by this point, that's when I start to get uncomfortable. And she agreed, of course. I mean, and I think I would have told her anyway, just maybe in a different conversation, right? But I gave her a concrete way that she could address the problem so that it wouldn't come up again, so that I would know that she was being safe, that I could actually see that she was being safe. I think that's a really relatable, really clear example of a situation where you have to get your child's attention or something bad might happen, right? And to be clear, like, we don't just let our kid ride her bike towards traffic unattended and without any clear directions, okay? Um, Odds are she probably would have been safe because she knew she needed to stop, but it was enough of a visual scare for me to have a big reaction. So those things are going to happen. And when they do, the important thing is to come to your child and say, hey, I I know you don't like it when I yell like that. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry I yelled. I was scared. I'm working on handling that better. And at the same time, This is a situation where I worry about your safety, where there is an actual safety concern. And here is how you protect yourself in these situations. Here's how you keep yourself safe. And you reiterate the criteria for safety for them, the rules. You help them remember, okay, if I'm going to be riding my bike, I need to stop at the stop signs. Then they have something to work with. And they know that you're not mad at them. They know that you, don't, you didn't mean to yell, that it was an accident, that it was because you were scared, just like they might yell if they were going down a water slide. And they know that you're working on reacting differently and you're working with them to try to prevent situations like that from happening in the first place. Now, hopefully this sort of situation isn't something you're dealing with every day. Hopefully you and your child have had good communication about what's safe and what's not, and they're pretty on board with that. But sometimes unexpected situations come up, and I just want you to know that if you do have an elevated reaction in those situations, you are not failing it's normal, and you can go to your child and repair the situation pretty easily. It's also normal for them to have a reaction to your reaction, so just knowing that if 
your voice scares them and they start crying, that's okay too. And you can tell them, yeah, I'm sorry. I can see that I scared you by doing that. I was scared. And that's something that I need to work on. Okay, I hope that that is helpful for you. I know that situations like this arise for everybody. It's going to look different for everybody just based on your comfort zone and what kind of activities you're doing, right? So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a framework to work with when it does come up for you. And I hope you have a wonderful week. I will talk to you in the next episode. Do you feel like you're parenting 24-7 and you're still not sure your child is getting what they need? Are you ready to stop parenting reactively and start living in partnership with your sensitive child? Are you ready to reclaim time for yourself and time for your dreams? Then you're going to want to explore coaching with me. I help my clients tune out all the noise better understand their kids, build a parenting strategy that meets their family's specific needs, and do the mindset work necessary to implement that strategy consistently without sacrificing themselves in the process. To get started, just head over to partnerpath.com, click on coaching, and get your free consultation set up. Let's get to know each other.